and it says we are live hello everybody welcome my name is diane rose solomon i am the founder of animal magic films here we go and thank you for joining us for the 25th interview in the science and magic of the human animal bond interview series we will be exploring many of the way well some of the ways, many of the ways, eventually many of the ways, right now some of the ways, that animals help people and people help animals. It is a both and conversation where we all benefit from this bond. I know I've benefited immensely from my relationship with my pets and from a surprise therapy dog visit when I was hospitalized years ago. I also experience great joy watching other people heal from their interactions with animals. And I'm captivated by non-companion animals like wild animals, farm animals, and more. But now we get to hear from you, people who are making our relationships with our pets, our communities, and our natural environment just a little bit better. So welcome my guest today. I'm so excited. Jody Miller-Young, who is the founder of The Hound Healer. Hi, Jody. Hi, Diane. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's such a pleasure for me. I'm so happy to see you. It's such a mm -hmm. delight for me. Yeah, same here. We're friends too. People should yeah, know. Yeah, we're friends, friends too. So it makes yeah. it easy and more fun. And we haven't seen each Absolutely. other in a while. So this is great. Yeah. So let me tell you a little bit more. And by the way, even though we're friends, what she's doing now is totally new to me. So I'm not sharing anything that, that I know anything about from before. This is all brand new to me because it's new to Jody too, relatively new. So let me tell you a little bit about Jody and then I want to learn more. And I think everybody else wants to learn more too. Jody is a 30 plus year which is amazing, you must have started when you were two, homeopathic yeah. healer in her personal life. Uh, she is now helping pet parents to naturally and holistically heal their sick pets, offering a solution to extend their lives and add precious time with their best friend, which we all want. Jody is a certified pet homeopathic educator. She is about to launch her program, Hound Healer Homeopathy, How to Help Our Pets Live Longer, Healthier Lives, and I can't wait to learn more about that. She was a blogger, radio host, and fashion editor at Hamptons Pet Magazine in the pet fashion and rescue space uh, with her brand Bark and Swagger for several years, which is the first place where I knew you, yeah. and still interviews designers, authors, and activists on her podcast of the same name, which reaches over 250,000 on-demand listeners. Wow, that's a huge reach, Jody. It's amazing. Hey. So welcome again. And um, oh, did I take this off yet? No, I didn't. Let's see your name much more interesting okay tell me what inspired you to start the hound healer how did you go from using homeopathics for yourself to starting a whole new business about helping animals sure um i started having success with homeopathy when my daughter morgan was four and she's 35. so it's and i discovered it the year before then um and so it's been a long time and on and off the wagon of utilizing homeopathy for myself, for my animals, my family, my friends. Um, and I was really looking for a way to combine my passions. You know, you mentioned Bark and Swagger. I love fashion. You know, that fulfilled um, a passion of mine for a few years and I still get to keep my toe in the water of that. But especially in this day that we live in, this day and age that we live in, the state of the world, healing is critical. And I've always been um, passionate about natural medicine. And I've always been passionate about animals, as you know. Um, this was a beautiful way to bring them together and to help other pet parents in a way that homeopathy has helped me and learning about good nutrition has helped me and my pets. So I, first of all, I love that you have really, they're very different, they're almost like right brain, left brain kind of things. They're both creative in their own ways, but I love how one's more like sciencey and, you know, that road. And then Bark and Swagger is really just, you know, fun and, you know, creative and, fashion-y and yeah i have it all living inside here that's great <laughs> i know and it, you've got to share it out in the world right yes yeah. yes yes but i love the healing space for me is is home um and just 
seeing the successes that my students have had, um, it brings such joy. It's, it's, you know how we feel about our animals. Yeah. You know, if, if our, if our beloved dog or cat is sick and we're not having success with what we're getting from the vet or it's limited success or, you know, whatever the problems may be, if you can help someone learn the tools to be able to actually heal their animal and see the results of that, I mean, that's priceless. And that is, it's a beautiful gift. And that is what I'm, I'm hoping to share with as many pet parents as I can around the world. That's my mission. Great. And we're going to get to that in a second. But as you're speaking, I'm, I'm wondering, like, is what you're sharing instead of traditional veterinary medicine or is it in no. addition to? It's complementary. It's, com it's complementary. Okay. Um, I would never tell anyone don't go to the vet. Mm -hmm. Because vets are important. Vets, to me, there's no place I'd rather be than having Western medicine available to me for diagnostics, mm -hmm. for emergencies, for surgeries. Um, but I do find and have found that for everyday things, including bouts of diarrhea, vomiting, you know, acute things, first aid, um, and even some chronic issues, certainly skin issues, IBD issues, um, that Western medicine falls short, mm -hmm. that the pharmaceutical drugs that they prescribe, because this is what vets learned in med school, you know, it's not their fault. They weren't taught really proper nutrition. They weren't taught complementary modalities that could help to prolong life. Um, these pharmaceutical medications, they often suppress the mm -hmm. symptoms that our pets are exhibiting. And if you look at symptoms like the red light on the dashboard when something goes wrong in your car, it's important to let you know that there's an imbalance in there. The pharmaceuticals that suppress the imbalance or what I call palliate, which is they make them go away while you're giving the medicine, but then as soon as you stop, they come back. They never solve the imbalance. And as long right. as that imbalance is there, you're still going to be sick. Makes total sense. And I mean, I've experienced that with my own personal self. It, Absolutely. You know, it applies to people and pets. Yeah, yeah. And and to be able to not put a Band-Aid on it, per se, exactly. but, but to be able to get to the root of the issue. Exactly. But I really appreciate that you're that it, this is complementary to veterinary medicine because I think that some people might be afraid to say, "Wait, you know, I, I but no, like I don't maybe out with the bathwater." No, perfect. I, that I'm not a vet. Right. And the the pet parents I teach, they may gain a lot of knowledge. They do, and therefore have power to take back some control of their pet's health. But they're not vets either. Right. We're doctors. We're not doctors. Yeah. So there are times when you need a doctor. Right. And you should never not go to your vet if you're worried. You know, there's something, there's a, a really useful piece of information I'd love to share with your audience about how to determine if your pet really needs to go to the vet. Awesome. It's something that we call beam, like a beam of light. And it's something that you have to notice. You know your baby better than anyone. Mm -hmm. Beam is four different things. B stands for behavior. Mm -hmm. Is your dog behaving pretty normally? E stands for energy. Is your energy level pretty normal for them? A stands for appetite. Is your appetite normal for them? And M stands for mood. Same mm -hmm. thing. If your pet's beam is good, Whatever they have, it's transitory, and you can probably treat it at home, homeopathically, or with another healing modality. If their beam is off for more than a couple of days, take them to the vet because yeah. they're safe and sorry, right? For sure, for and sure. If, and if you're treating homeopathically and it's not getting better and you're concerned, go to the vet. Right. Don't ever not go to the vet. It's just you will have tools in your toolkit that you'll be surprised 
at how powerful they can be, even though they're very gentle. So it's great to have more tools in the kit, right? Yeah, of course. We want them to live longer, healthier lives. We don't want to keep shoving pharmaceuticals down them. We don't want to have them on a diet that is not going to promote longevity and, and vibrant good health. We want to know all these things to be the best pet parents we can be. Great. Which leads me to my next question. You are a certified pet homeopathic educator. Yes. Tell me what that means. I know you've got a course that's starting next week. Yes. Please tell me like what you're educating, like what what do you share? Tell us about the course a little bit. Of who is course. it who is it for? Yep. Okay. I was trained in both aspects of conventional medicine and the anatomy as well as homeopathy for dogs and cats in order to be able to be certified as a pet homeopathic educator. So I have a certification in that and my course reflects that in the following ways. Um, the bulk of my course, the majority of my course is teaching pet parents the basics of homeopathy, what it is, what it handles and how to do it. And halfway through my course, we're starting to take their pet's case. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, I have other experts in complementary fields who participate in my course, okay. whether I interview them or whether they actually come on live. And that includes a holistic veterinarian who helps me help my students go through case taking, which is such an important part of homeopathy. It is, I have one module devoted to nutrition. What does good nutrition look like? Why, why is it so important? And what's in some of our pets' food? Well, I have someone who's an expert in what's in some of our pets' food, who has eyes inside the production and manufacturing plants, the processing plants, and sees the horrific things that go into pet food because it's an unregulated industry. So my students, by the end of my course, and it's a six week course, they know what good nutrition means and what they should be feeding their animal. Um, they know uh, the basics of homeopathy, what to look for and how to take their pet's case. And they're already in the process of taking that case, finding the right remedy, because I teach them how to do all of that, and starting on that remedy. Wow. And the beautiful thing, too, is while my course is very supportive, because I'm really, really hands on, and for this iteration of my course, it's going to be a beta. So it's a small group. I want to keep it a small group because I want to be very involved with each of my students like I was with my last round. They graduate from my course. Those are the dogs in the background. <laughs> Mailman, another male guy. Oh. Um, and they seamlessly flow into a partnership that I created with a holistic veterinary platform. Right. And that platform has about six holistic veterinarians, all of whom trained as conventional vets and practiced for many years as conventional vets, but became disillusioned and sort of went the holistic route. Um, so they get a one-on-one -on -one every month with a holistic vet to talk about their pet issue. Wow. They get a forum that they can post in about what's going on with their pet. There are lots of experienced pet parents on there in different modalities. The vets weigh in on the forum. They get continuing education. They get weekly webinars. There's a lot. So my course is really a 360 of hand-holding through the learning process and then continuing education for that process. I mean, I think this is so amazing. I've, you know, maybe just because I haven't been looking for it, but I haven't seen anybody teaching this before. And, you know, one of our veterinarians where my dogs go for PT or they call it rehab. They don't can't call it PT for animals, but we'll call it. Right. 
physical therapy. Right. They use a combination of Eastern and Western. I mean, they, they do acupuncture and, you know, um, it's just so nice to see that, that it, all different modalities are being more widely accepted because I don't believe that there's only one way to mm -hmm. do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, if all of these veterinarians and we see it in human medicine too, people get disenchanted and they realize that sometimes they're doing more harm than good with, with what they were doing. And if there's a better way to, you know, to more healthfully and more naturally help ourselves and help our, our animals, why wouldn't we opt for that? Exactly. There's actually two things that what you just said brought up for me. One is you are so fortunate that you're in a city like Los Angeles where you have access to so many different modalities of healing for you and right. your dogs and cats. Um, not everybody has that. And there are students of mine who were in the middle of the country and it takes an hour to get to the vet and their vet is very conventional and their vet has prescribed, you know, over vaccination and multiple pharmaceuticals. And, you know, in one case, their poor dog developed these terrible bleeding polyps in, in his ears and growths, tumors like growths where on a vaccination site, other places. And because homeopathy is a do no harm medicine, it, it was created almost 300 years ago by a conventional physician and scientist, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. Because it is a medicine that has been able to heal everything from acute stuff like first aid stuff to cancer, dare mm -hmm. I say, um, my student's dog, his growths are drying up, wow. healing off. And he is, this is chronic. Riley has been experiencing this for years, so it's going to take time. But he is on the road to cure. That is not going to happen in conventional medicine. Now, again, vets are important. Yes. But pharmaceuticals that suppress, they are not going to cure your animal. Homeopathy triggers the body to heal itself from the inside out. And that is true to us. That's key, that it's it's triggering the body to heal itself. That's the it's key. It's not doing anything to the body. It's energy medicine. Right. So, and this is really important for everyone listening to know because this is why, unlike herbs, which are also wonderful if you know what you're doing with herbs, unlike herbs, homeopathic remedies do not have active ingredients. So if a six-month-old baby swallowed a whole bottle of homeopathic pellets, nothing would happen. But it is energy medicine. So if you learn how to match the symptoms that a homeopathic remedy would create in a healthy person or animal with the symptoms that you or your animal is experiencing, that energy triggers, it, it, it stimulates because the energy kind of, there's a meeting of the energy minds, if you will, of this, the remedy with the internal body. And it triggers the body to start the healing process. That's in simplistic terms how homeopathy works. So you don't have to worry about homeopathy contraindicating any pharmaceuticals that you might be on or your pet is on if you want to start that route and then hopefully eventually wean them off of pharmaceuticals. Um, and you don't have to worry about overdosing with homeopathy. But you do need to learn how to do it because... Only by knowing how to do it, because it's a very elegant form of medicine, where you know how to choose the right remedy. And it's only the right remedy that's going to trigger the healing. This is so interesting, Jody. It's I, super cool. It is super cool. <laughs> it is. It's super cool. And I've had a few people who saw that I was interviewing you today, and you know, a little bit that I've, oh, this sounds really interesting. So um, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for the people that are going to take this class. Um, and I, I can't wait to hear, you know, more about results. I mean, it's just, you know, and, and the more people that have results, the more widely understood it will be and more widely accepted it will be. Yeah. You know? I mean, there are so many people who 
after all these years of homeopathy being around who have had amazing results through homeopathy. All you have to do is kind of look for it. Um, but in my course already, I mean, I've had one student just by taking my advice in terms of nutrition for her dog, a chronic ear infection just resolved, gone. Um, another who with nutrition alone, an eye, a chronic eye issue cleared up, gone, and the dog is acting like a puppy. Wow. My other student, who's the growths we talked about, another student, her dog has, unfortunately, her dog swallowed a needle, a sewing needle, a few years ago, and that triggered, it had to get operated on, obviously, but that triggered um, chronic digestive problems. And he, every bout, is preceded by his paws getting raw and red, which is unusual. And so she took what I taught her and she chose a remedy for that. And the first remedy she chose helped with the paws, but then she had a feeling based on, she's very intuitive, intuitively connected to math, really, you know, right in your lane of, you know, the relationship we have with our, our animals, that bond. Um, and she just felt like a remedy, a certain remedy was going to help him. It had just helped her, like literally days before. And it, it matched up. So she tried it. And it, it worked like a charm. Wow. And Max healed. And she literally texted me, Diane, a few days ago after visiting her vet for their checkup. She also has another dog, Chloe, who was not on homeopathy. And Max, her vet, gave her a glowing report that she hasn't gotten in the longest time and said, Max is in balance. Max, the homeopathy has worked like a charm. He's doing what you're doing. Um, he's looking great. He doesn't look like an 11 year old. He looks more like a seven or eight year old. Um, and it was just the most heartwarming, beautiful report. Yeah. 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 So there's, there's so much you can do with homeopathy. You just have to know. That's amazing. Well, I'm sure grateful that you are out there Thank at the ready to teach people and hopefully a lot of people um, because, you know, one of the questions that I generally ask in these interviews is how does your work help people and animals? And it's just so obvious, like, you know, just, mm -hmm. just talking about it. It's, 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 you've already, you've already, said it without saying it, you know? Yeah. I it's, mean, I want people to be able to keep their best friends around longer. And, and, and happy and healthy. And have them healthy, have vibrant lives, and and have the, the benefit of being able to keep themselves healthy, too, and their loved ones. Because, as I said, it's the same premise for people as pets. So once you learn this skill, it's the gift that keeps on giving for a lifetime. Amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, before we go, I mean, you've told some amazing stories and I'm sure you've got more. And I'm, I'm sure at the end of this course, you're going to have even more as people go through the whole process. And then as you offer more courses, and it, I think it's, it's remarkable what you're doing. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share that, that you haven't shared yet that you think that we should know? Any stories or anything? Um, well, yes, I can share a quick story about my own Sophie. Mm -hmm. She's 11 and a half. She's a Portuguese Pedango Pequeno. And all that means is she's a hound, but she really looks like a scruffy terrier mix. <laughs> um, but she has had chronic skin issues. Long time. And when I was off the homeopathic wagon years ago, she did. She was on Apoquel, which I'm sure a lot of pet parents will recognize that drug mm -hmm. for a short while um, and got a side of point shot both suppressives, um, and I did her case um, probably about a year ago, and um, she was so typical, a pulsatilla girl. Pulsatilla is a homeopathic remedy that I decided to try it on her, mm -hmm. and so we did a course of, of pulsatilla, and the beautiful thing about homeopathy is unlike Western drugs, you don't keep giving it. You have you give it just until it starts to work, and then you stop. 
and you get the most goodness out of it. And then if you notice a little flip, you get another dose and you stop. Well, Sophie hasn't had Pulsatilla in months and months and months, but her skin issues definitely started resolving. We're not 100% there yet because it's chronic and we need a couple of other remedies to get us further and further down from A to Z. But it did other incredible things because it is a holistic totality of symptoms healing modality. Sophie went from being very skittish to being much less skittish. She went from being the pickiest eater on the planet. Diane, literally, I used to have to lay by her bowl and hand feed her, and <laughs> beg her to eat like, you know, a, mo a proclaimed mother who, who was like worrying that her, her daughter wasn't eating and she was going to like roll over from malnutrition. But I used to do this with Sophie. She is now a foodie. <laughs> so the imbalance that caused her to be very, very picky about her food resolved. She is wow. a foodie. She's happy. She's healthy. And she has just come out of herself. And that absolutely was the pulsatilla. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So it's just really wonderful, amazing, and unexpected things can happen too. With amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I'm so thrilled to have learned about this. I'm sure a lot of people are also going to be thrilled to learn about this. And where can we learn more about what you're doing and, and, and learn more? Well, you can go to thehoundhealer.com and I would encourage you to sign up on my site for um, my email list because I regularly send out blog posts about common issues that we as pet parents face and natural ways to heal them. And it's not only about homeopathy, it's also about things I've learned al along the way, whether it's supplements or other types of modalities that can help. So it's just great information to have. And then for information on the course, which begins Monday, October 11th, I think Diane has a link up here. Yeah, that's up. And I'll make sure that we post it in the show notes, and then when this goes out in social media tomorrow, we'll make sure that it's there Thank so people you. can get the landing page. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. I so appreciate it, Diane. Oh my goodness, it's such a pleasure. I mean, it's so great to, to know that this is available and that you're here to teach it, Jody. I'm thrilled. And people will love being your student because you're a joy to be with. Aw. That part I can certainly attest to. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so um, thank you, Jody, for being here. It's really been a pleasure. Um, but before we go, just a few quick announcements. Um, you can join our community also, not instead of also, um, Animal Magic Films to learn about upcoming films and news. And if you're watching this the week of October 4th, 5th, today's the 5th, uh, we've got a new film coming out next week. And if you're part of our community, you will get to see it before everybody else. And um, if you're not yet a member of our Facebook community, The Science and Magic of the Human-Animal Bond, and let's see, our YouTube channels, Animal Magic Films, and you're always welcome to email me at diane at animalmagicfilms.com with questions, concerns, comments, anything you got. Um, but let's put this back up, and I'll make sure that this link is available to everybody. So thank you again, Jody. It's really been an honor and a pleasure thank to share what you're so doing. Much. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody else who's joined us today. I'm so glad you joined us and learned a little bit more about Jody and the Hound Healer. Thank you for taking time out of your day, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is where you are. And it's been a real pleasure for me. And we will actually actually be back in a month with our next interview. So thanks again. See everybody soon. Bye. Bye, Jody. <laughs>